Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today is September the 4th, and it is 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And today, if you live in the United States, is the last official holiday of the summer, Labor Day. And I hope that each and every one of you that's watching this show will have a fantastic Labor Day. And I hope that you have a lot of good grilled food, all that good stuff, because it's definitely going to be worth it. I can tip, mm, I can smell it now. But anyway, I want to cover uh, last week's word, last Friday's word, the last day I was on the air with you, and that word was self improvement. Self improvement. Definition of self improvement is the improvement of one's knowledge, status, or characters by one's own efforts. By one's own efforts. And I hope that you took the effort. That each one, each there when you're just watching the show takes the effort to go to a shoe show, go to a Foot Locker, go to a shoe department, go to whatever shoe name brand name of the store the shoe where you live at, and purchase you an excellent pair of walking shoes. Get something that's durable now because it's going to be a rough road. And I hope that you come home, you put those shoes on, you drink your water, get a red power air, whatever it is, get yourself hydrated, and get the towel because you're going to do some sweating because you get ready to walk. On this road to wisdom this morning. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Danny Graham, and I am your host. Welcome to my show, The Road to Wisdom. And hey, I'm ready. Another week, another week of encouragement, another word of the day. And the word of the day for today is, as you can see right here, is boom, pride. Pride is the word of the day. And as I always say about words in the past, this might be another humdinger. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to give you two definitions of pride. I'm going to give you the regular um, Webster's Dictionary, so to speak, um, version of pride, definition of pride. And I'm also going to give you the biblical definition of pride. First, Webster, pride, a feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements or the achievements of those with whom one is closely associated with or from qualities or possessions that are widely admired. Hmm, let's say that one more time. A feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements or the achievement of those with whom one is closely associated with or from qualities or possessions that are widely admired. That is Webster's Dictionary version of, I mean, definition of pride. The biblical definition of pride is an excessive love of one's own excellence. Mm, see that key word, excessive. Excessive means too much, a lot of. So the Bible's definition of pride is an excessive love of one's own excellence. And the scripture comes from the book of Proverbs. Hmm, are you surprised? I'm not. On the book of Proverbs, the 11th chapter, the second verse, it says, When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. Hmm, I love that. Dannyism t-shirt. Again, Proverbs 11th chapter, the second verse says, When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. And what I've always prayed for, y'all, wisdom. Man, you can never get too much wisdom, man. Wisdom is the key, I think, to life, key to success, key to helping yourself as well as helping your fellow man. And that's what I want, to be as wise as humanly possible so I can pass on that wisdom to my family, to my friends, and anybody that wants to listen to what I got to say and know that it's coming from a pure place, a place that I'm trying to help, not trying to hurt. Um, There are a lot of different... um of uh, stories and people that was in the Bible that were very prideful. Um, as we know, Samson was very prideful. God gave him immense strength, and he did things he wasn't supposed to do. Uh, I think he had honey from the lion's body, and, and he knew good and well he wasn't supposed to do that. He fooled his parents. I think he was his parents were a little fearful of him because I think if they didn't let him do what he wanted to do, he would. they they thought in their mind that he would turn on them. And, of course, you know, he was... Uh, Went and started dating Delilah, which was not what God wanted him to do, was not the woman that he wanted him to go for. I think she was out of a different tribe that God didn't approve of. And of course, me and my parents were talking about this weekend. Why did Sam's do that? Because Sam's was just dumb. And I'm going to say that, and I don't mean to be disrespectful. But if a woman asks you, 
and says to you, Danny, why are you so strong? And, and and what makes you so strong? And you at first, and you know that you're not supposed to tell. You know that that's the covenant that God made with your mother for you. And you'd be like, hmm, okay. You use common sense the first time. Well, if you tie me up with rope, that will rest restrict me and I won't be able to use my strength. So you go to sleep and then you wake up and guess what? You find yourself with your wrist tied. Now, a common sense would tell you, hmm, I can't trust this woman. But I pop rope and I fight off, defeat my enemies. And the next night or the next day, she comes back. You lied to me, Danny. You lied to me, Danny. You told me if I tied your wrist, why don't you trust me? Now, anybody with common sense would look at her and be like, really? But what it was, it was a sex. Sex was crazy, I guess, back then. And sex was too weak, too enjoyed wickedness, enjoy being with her. That is fool. He still didn't trust her. He told her something else. I'm not sure. I can't remember what he told her. But guess what? He goes to sleep. She does whatever he tells him to do. He wakes up again in that predicament. I'm like, wow. Really? He's able to defeat his enemies a second time and keep going. But So she just keeps nagging him and nagging him and nagging him. Okay, first of all, he should have got up and left. Or went somewhere else because he clearly could see that he could not trust her. But again, like I said, I guess the sex was fantastic. He just couldn't resist. So he finally tells her, look, leave me alone. If you cut my hair off, man, that'll, that'll take my power. And just leave me alone, okay? So I'm guessing, I don't know why this fool still believes that he could trust her. Goes to sleep, guess what? She takes shears or scissors, whatever they had back then, cuts his hair, and guess what? He's weak as a lamb. So not only is he humiliated, they treat him like some kind of slave animal and got him doing things that animals would do, turning the wheels and stuff, the grind the corn, all this kind of crazy stuff. They mock him. They jug out his eyes and stuff. But he was so prideful. He thought he was just so strong and that she was so trustful, trustworthy that God would forsake him. But guess what? When you're disobedient, you don't do what God tells you to do, then that's what happens. Pride goes before the fall. And Samson fell and he fell hard because he was too ignorant, too prideful, thought that his strength was just so much would always get him out of a jam, which it did get him out of jams when God was with him. But when you disobey God, then sometimes he's going to take his hands away from you to teach you a lesson because your pride gets in the way. If your pride gets in the way of God's um, orders, God's wishes, God's um, doctrines, then guess what? There's going to be a consequence. There's going to be a price. And his consequence is that he lost his strength, he lost his eyesight, and he was treated like an animal until he repented. His hair grew back. He repented. He asked God to grant him his strength one more time, which God did, and he used that strength to kill all his enemies as well as himself. So pride, that would cause Samson to go through all of that, his pride. His pride came before God's plans, God's wishes, God's doctrines. So that's what happened. Pride goes before the fall. Another king, or another person in the Bible is King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar, this comes out of the book of Daniel. He was so prideful that he had a giant gold statue built of himself. Like, okay, wow, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go all out. I'm not only going to have a picture or a portrait, but I'm going to have one of the most precious minerals in the world. I'm going to have that fashion in my likeness, not God likeness. And then on top of that, Whenever you come by that statue, you're going to have to bow. You're going to have to bow and worship me. Like, really? God put you in this position as king, but you so full of yourself. You got such a big head, such an attitude, such a just this and that, and I'm all that and a bag of chips, and, and build a gold statue. I don't remember how tall it was, but a huge gold statue of yourself, and you made your people bow to that. Instead of worshiping God, they're worshiping you. God ain't having that. King Nebuchadnezzar went on hard times after that stunt. In order for pride to work, it must be paired with humility. You gotta be very humble when God gives you a God given talent. A lot of times you see athletes do this, and a lot of times you see famous people do this, and I'm not sure whether they're sincere. I'm hoping that they're sincere, but when they win an award, they win an Oscar or do something great or they win a championship or whatever the case may be. 
lot of times people say they put that God is the first in my life and I thank God for this. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be humble. You're not supposed to be boastful or, or bragful or braggadocious and all that kind of stuff. If God gives you the ability to do something very well, whenever you get recognition for it, you should recognize God. You win a championship, somebody interviews you. If you're sincere and if you're really doing what's, what's is right and living the right life, then you should say, look, thank God. I thank God for giving me this ability, this talent to do this. And that is what God wants to do. That, that's what God wants to hear. God wants to let you know that, look, I'm going to give you this blessing. I'm going to give you this fame. I'm going to give you this glory, but I need you to use that same fame and glory and, and ability to, to represent me to praise my name, to let people know that, yes, I give you that power, and I'm going to be with you. Even though I'm giving you this same blessing and power and, and notoriety, whatever, you're still going to go through storms. Storms is going to strengthen you, and also it's going to make you come back to me, and it's going to strengthen our connection with one another. But if you're prideful and say you did it all yourself, uh, hey, I'm a hard, hard work, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, you put in hard work and, and that kind of stuff, but God gave you that ability. Don't be too prideful. Don't get the big head. Don't get too boastful. Don't get too braggadocious. Don't get too big for your britches, so to speak, and don't recognize where your blessings come from. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. The hand that feeds you in every aspect of your life is God and Jesus saying, don't bite it. Always be thankful for it. Thank you, Lord. I just said it before I came on this show. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up. Let me see another day. Lord, please bless this channel. Please give me the the words to speak, please give, let me enunciate and pronounce words the correct way, Lord. Please let me resonate with people that are watching this. I can't do this show without you. I did the show without you, but it, it wasn't successful. It was okay. It was mediocre. I know with you, this show can be great. I just got to put in the work, and I just got to thank you each and every time before I go on, each and every time when I get off. And thank you, Lord, for inspiring me with these words to try to encourage people in a positive way. That's what I pray for. That's all I can do. And God will do the rest. Um, I'm going to quickly go through a few things. It was 15 different things that uh, signs that you may be a little bit um, prideful. I didn't go through all 15. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, I pick out seven. And when, when I say these things, some of you will be like, hmm, I know exactly what you're talking about. And the first thing is you might be a little bit prideful if you find yourself assuming that you already know something that someone is trying to teach. You go to a class, you go to a, a, a Bible study, you go to whatever seminar or whatever the case, and a person is talking on, is talking on a particular topic that you think that you that you are just an expert in. And as soon as they get into it and they, you just kind of hear something that you're familiar with, oh, man, this is a waste of my time. I, I know about this. You don't know everything about every topic that you think you know. Some people know the Bible backwards and forth, but I guarantee you there's some scriptures in there that they don't know. Some people know in law enforcement, all aspects of law enforcement, but there's, not, there's some particular part of law enforcement that you don't know. In, in my case in point, there was a particular um, training class that my, that my boss, my sheriff, put everybody through, a lot of people in the department through, because he himself, the leader, our leader, was not familiar with a particular aspect of the law, and some of us knew the basics, but not all of it. So he gave us the opportunity to go there and to learn about this particular thing that would greatly affect our um, pro our job and our profession. And it was a, it was a sign of a great leader, of a good leader, because a good leader knows his or her limitations and know that and know firsthand I don't know everything. So if I don't know everything, I gotta ask for help. I gotta go somewhere. I gotta try to research. I gotta try and learn. So if that particular situation comes up, then I'll be prepared. Excellent leader, excellent client, but excellent sign. And just if you go to a class and the teacher or the instructor starts something, and you're like, ah, oh, this is a class on on domestic violence. I know everything about. It. I know a lot about domestic violence, but I guarantee you I don't know every single aspect of it. So when I go in there, if I was going there with an attitude or anybody else you know with any particular subject, that might be a sign they're a little bit prideful. Second thing, seeing yourself as too good to do certain tasks. Seeing yourself as too good to perform certain tasks. Your sheriff tells you to do something, or your boss tells you to do something, your parent tells you to do something, your preacher tells you to do something. And the first thing that comes out of your mouth or pops in your mind is, Man, I ain't doing that. I, I, I'm too old. I, ain't, I don't do that. I, I did that 10 years ago. I'm not doing that now. It's prideful. 
if, if someone asks you if someone a lead of leadership, a parent, a pastor, a boss, or something, there may be a reason why he's asking that. Now it could be because you messed up and it's a form of punishment, but it could be is that he or she has no one else. The job needs to be done, and they're asking you because they depend depend on you, depend on you. And they know that you do the jobs and things that's required of you when asked. But sometimes, and I'm, I've been guilty of myself, man. I ain't doing that. I'm a major in the sheriff's office. I ain't doing that. That's what we got. Captain's lieutenants and stuff. I've said that before. But I know that if the job really needs to get done and my boss tells me, look, I need this done. I need this done by you. I may not like it, but I'm going to do it. But if you feel like that or if you refuse to do the job or the task that's at hand, then you might be prideful. Yeah, you might be say it and then reluctantly do it. But if you ref flat out refuse to do whatever's asked, you say, I'm too good for that. I ain't doing that. That's beneath me. Might be a sign of pride pridefulness. If you're too prideful to ask for help, third thing, too prideful to ask for help, you are completely lost. You don't know what you're doing. A lot of men do this at home. A light fixture goes out or a, uh, something on the car goes out, something on the lawnmower goes out. And you go on YouTube, wherever you try to go on and try to read it, trust me, man. You think, ah, I can do this. Don't worry about it. I can do this. And you, you're not there all day or half the day or it's taking longer than it should take. But you're too prideful to get on the phone and ask for help or too prideful to get, call somebody. And I tell my people that work for me, look, I get a phone. It stays on 24-7. Problems happen not only in daytime, they happen at nighttime. They happen sometimes at the most inopportune time possible, 2 or 3 o'clock at night. And I've heard some of my guys say, I didn't want to wake you up. I didn't want to serve. That's what I get paid for. So call me, wake me up. I want you to ask me a question that would keep you out of trouble as well as me out of trouble, as well as the sheriff's office out of trouble, as well as our sheriff out of trouble before you do something stupid or something that you thought was right and there ain't nowhere right about it. If you're too prideful or too just, I, I got it. I can do this. I can do this. That is a direct indicator that you are prideful, that you may be a bit too prideful than what's necessary to be. That was the third thing. Fourth thing, discarding advice from others. Somebody tries to give you some advice, they see you going down the wrong path, but you're like, okay, man, I, I ain't doing that. That's stupid. That's dumb, okay? A lot of times when we're in the season of well, a bad season and we just in all in our feelings and we can't hear or see that somebody is trying to give us actually good, sound advice. But if we like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm going to do it my way. Your way ain't working. Your way constantly gets you in trouble. Your way constantly gets you fussed at. Your way constantly gets you where you got to pay some kind of fine or, or, or make whatever aspect of your life a little bit harder. Doing it your way. Doing it your way. Instead of someone saying, look, I see you struggling over here. You probably might want to do this because I went through the same thing you've been. Parents do this all the time with their children. All the time with their children. I've seen my kids make some, I won't say crazy, but some ill-advised mistakes, choices, decisions. You try to tell them, say, look, me and your mom, we've already been through this. You are 30-something, you're 20-something, we're 50-something. You will never know what we've been through. You, I've been 20-something, I've been 30-something, you've never been 50-something. I've got 20-something years experience over you. I might have seen something that you hadn't seen. And you probably want to do this, this, and this because it's going to prevent you from going down ABC, 1, 2, 3 lane. You can go down the much easier, a much. You can avoid that lane completely if you listen when I say. And they say that and they have responses. I got to live for myself. Hey, they got to do this. I got I to learn. Okay. Trying to tell you that that's a harder road. This is an easy way to travel. A lot of times, you get that at work with a coworker. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, but I, I got it. I got this, this, and this. And then they go and make a mistake. Then look at you when your boss calls them in on the carpet. He goes up one side there, the button on the other side. And like, I told you, I tried to tell you not to do that, but you didn't want to listen. When people refuse to listen to sound advice, that's an indicator they might be a bit too prideful. Um, Unable to receive constructive criticism. Unable to receive constructive criticism. That's number five. I know an individual, every single time you hear that person constructive criticism, they take off. Every single time. It's, it's like clockwork. You can set your clock to it. Don't know why. Because guess what? 
if it's going to make me better, if I'm in a position of leadership and someone tells me, hey, look, you might want to do this, Danny, because I see you doing ABC, one, two, three. You need to be doing four, five, six, EFG. I'm going to do that, especially with someone that I respect, someone that's in a position that, I, I try, that I'm trying to get to one day because they're there. They know. They see things that I can't see. Same thing with parents. Same thing with pastors. Usually pastors of the church, not saying in every aspect, but pastors of the church are more spiritually enlightened than their, their the people that they preach to in the congregation. And so we have questions and stuff, or usually the Sunday school teacher is usually an elder or someone that's been a Christian a longer time, and he or she knows or have a good understanding of the Bible. If you ask the questions and you go to them and stuff, and they say, look, I, I, I didn't want to say anything, but since you come to me, you open the door, I'm going to tell you. You might want to do this, 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 and this. They come for you. They come to you in a respectful tone and try to tell you, give you advice, or, or try to give you constructive criticism. And you just no, 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 no. I, 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 I hear what you're saying, and I really don't. But I got this. I got this. When I was doing this channel, when I first started, if you go back and watch my first videos, my videos now, there is a vast improvement. And the reason why constructive criticism. I would call my co-workers that watch it, my parents that watch it, my siblings that watch it, my pastors that watch it, and I would ask them, look, what can I do better? What do you think I need to do? What can I do this? One told me that I need to do ABC. One told me to do DEF. One told me this, this, and this. Everything that they told me that I thought and what they said would make it better, and I would say, hmm, you know, I'm going to try that. I did it. I, just name change. First, I was coming to this comment check. My pastor said, it's a little confusing because I was thinking you was a comedian, that kind of stuff. And one of my, my good buddies, Robert Storm, said, look, it's a little confusing you're using comment chat and all that stuff you use for your comic books. You might want to rebrand and change the name. I rebrand and change the name. Now it's much more clearer. I like it better. It makes more sense. Constructive criticism. If I was such uh, too prideful, then I would not accept it. Accept it. The criticism, but I'm not that prideful when it comes to constructive criticism. The criticism is valid. I can see the points that they're making. It's going to improve my product. It's going to improve my personality. It's going to improve my characteristics, my character. Anything that's going to be self-improvement, I'm always in the look to improve, get the best version of Danny that I can possibly do. So if it's constructive criticism, it's coming from a place, from a friendship, from someone. It ain't got to be a friend as long as it's consider the the um. Criticism is constructive. Might be being your best friend to listen to it. But if you flat out refuse to listen to it, that's a sign of being prideful. Um, unwilling to submit to authority. Unwilling to submit to authority. My dad said the best when I was over at his house um, Saturday. He said, if you can't follow, then you can't be a good leader. And that is so true. If you can't follow, you can't be a good leader. So, Someone is telling you, man. Someone to me, somebody you're gonna be somebody's boss. Most people on this planet are gonna have a boss their entire life, their entire career. And um, when I say boss, they're physical boss, but you, we all we all have a heavenly spiritual voice, and that's Jesus and God. But if you can't follow that, you can't follow these rules. Then guess what? You it's prideful. I know there's some people I know, associate of mine, a friend of mine. He hates listening to female supervisors, and I'm like, whoa. Hmm. If they know what they're talking about, male or female, but particularly female, they know what they're talking about, and they got more rank than me, then I'm going to follow it. Now, if they don't know what they're talking about, I'm still going to follow it because I have to if they got more rank, but I'm going to try and approach get constructive criticism. Hey, Sarge, or hey, Lieutenant, whatever the case may be. You might want to try this and this. I was reading this book over here. I was reading the policy and procedure, and it says this, this, and this. Based on, based on what kind of person you are, how approachable they are, there are ways that you can get around that. Or you can, hey, look, document stuff, something happens, you can tell supervisor above her, look, so I was doing this, lieutenant doing this, whatever the case may be. When we first joined our church, my pa our pastor told us that, look, if he comes there and he starts te teaching us and preaching, us, uh, preaching to us something that's not doctrine, it's our responsibility to go above him to the next person in line and report it. Pastor is leader of the church, but he also has someone to answer to in the hierarchy of the church that's above him. And if he's not doing stuff right, then we have responsibility to report him. But guess what? While he's doing stuff right, then we must submit to his authority spiritually because he's the leader of that church. We join, we're members now, and we have a, a certain obligation 
far as him being a leader of the church to follow his rules and regulations within the guidelines of biblical doctrine. Also at work, sheriff, my chief, the two supervisors, hey, their rules, it's their rules. I often say to my boss, the sheriff, say, hey, this is your circus. Hey, if you're not happy with this circus, then you gotta find another circus to work at because right now you're the ringleader and we gotta do what you gotta say. So you have to follow authority. If you don't wanna to submit to authority, you wanna do stuff your own way and be like, nah, I ain't this and that, then guess what? You might be prideful. And last thing, name dropping. Hmm, name dropping. Ooh, we all have done it in some shape, form, and fashion, and it's and it's a definite sign of, of of being prideful. I'm gonna tell you what it is. You know somebody, or maybe your your friend knows somebody, or maybe your sibling, your brother, your family member, coworker knows somebody that's got a little bit of power, a little bit of stature. And then when you get around other people, you be like, hmm, I went last night and I ate with Senator so and so. I went last night and I ate with the bishop so and so and so. You ate with the bishop so and so so. Because of your friend, your family member, your coworker, you actually don't know, them. And, and maybe you had a conversation with this individual, but y'all ain't friends. But when you get around other people, you start dropping names because you hope that, ho that hopefully your uh, that name drop will elevate your status, or I guess whatever um, make you, I guess the big stuff at that particular party. You trying to impress somebody, so you drop these names of people that uh, have a certain level of prestige or a certain level of notoriety a certain level of status in society and you hope that's going to elevate your people your status in the people that you're trying to impress start name dropping man that's a definite sign of prideful pridefulness so those are the seven um things out of the 15 that i saw with the ones these seven that I, that I chose to show that you might be a little bit prideful and what i thought would hit home most um to the people here today again my name is danny graham this is my show the road to wisdom it is a beautiful Monday morning here in the state of South Carolina, Labor Day, the last official holiday of the summer. I hope that you have a fantastic Labor Day. Eat a lot of real food and be safe out there. If you're in the war like a lot of my friends are going to be today, I hope also that if this is your first time ever seeing me on this channel, that you will please subscribe. Please hit that notification bell because I don't want you to miss any material that I upload. Also, give me that thumbs up. That's a like. I need that. I want that. Got to have it. Also, leave me a comment. If you leave me a comment, I will definitely read it. And respond back to you in a timely fashion. Also, last but not least, any of my videos that I do, I need you to watch them to the start to the finish. It helps the YouTube algorithm. I don't know how, but I know that it does. Again, go get your shoes. Go get your shoes because guess what? I'm going to keep walking on this road. I'm going to leave you one thing before I get out of here. The quote for pride. The quote for the word pride. When you've done something wrong, admit it. And be sorry. No one in history has ever choked to death from swallowing his pride. Say that one more time. When you do something wrong, just admit it and be sorry about it. No one in history has ever choked to death from swallowing their pride. So don't swallow that pride. You won't die. I promise you, you won't. So, without further ado, I'll be back tomorrow. Different word. Not sure what it is. But thank you very much. Like I said, those shoes that you went out and purchased... You make sure that you keep them tight when you put them on every morning at 7 a.m. with me because we are definitely going to keep walking on this road to wisdom. Have a good day.